This is WKYT This Morning. Hello there. Good morning on your Tuesday and welcome. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Rebecca Smith. Hope your day's off to a great start. It's cold, but we'll deal oh, with it, right? Really, really cold yeah. out there this morning. <laughs> and it's now 630 and students in several counties can sleep in a little bit this morning, but not in Fayette County. We're live with the latest on this First Alert Severe Weather Day. Yeah, we're tracking those cold temperatures through the area. We've got some upper single digits, some lower teens showing up through a big chunk of central and eastern Kentucky. And tomorrow, we're going to track widespread snow chances, some accumulations possible from that. I'll we'll have the latest for you coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you. And let's get to the news. A possible shakeup on the UK football team after reports that a coach is leaving. Also, tickets for a one of a kind park in northern Kentucky go on sale today. Good morning. Welcome back. It's another bitterly cold morning, as we've been saying. For yeah. that reason, dozens of Kentucky schools are either closed or delayed today. Included are Bourbon, Clark, Jessamine counties, each on a two hour delay. But it's a normal start time in Fayette, Madison, and Scott counties. Debbie County's Mark Barber is live at the bus garage in Lexington. Good morning, Rebecca. Buses are now pulling out of the bus garage here on Liberty Road to pick up those students, but they'd never left this property before the safety of students was considered. That's because it is dangerously cold out here with temperatures this bitterly cold, hypothermia and uh, uh, other risks like frostbite. Those can set in in just a few minutes if your skin is exposed. So school leaders really had to decide this morning if they wanted their students out waiting at bus stops in this bitterly cold weather. Now, there are a number of school districts that have decided to delay school or cancel school today because of these frigid temperatures. In Jessamine, Bourbon, Clark, Breathitt and Bath County, schools are all operating on a two hour delay today to give everything time to warm up a bit before students head out to class. And in eastern and southern counties like Wolf, Knox, Nicholas and McGoffin, school has been called off for the day. Now for those who do have class today, like students here in Fayette County, they will be walking out into terribly cold temperatures. We're looking at lows near single digits and wind chills far below that close to zero degrees. So you will want to layer up as much as possible. Now, of course, we will continue to check for maybe any additional closings or delays as the morning goes along here. And you can find that full list for yourself as well over on our website, WKYT.com. As always, we'll keep you updated on air and online. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Well, when the temperatures drop below freezing, not everyone gets a day off. For some people, their job involves braving the cold. They have to find ways to stay warm while they work. Meals on Wheels drivers are told to bundle up while they make the rounds in the city. The program tells us their list of homebound clients is growing, and checking on them right now is critical. And more people in the community are stepping up to help others stay warm during this tough winter weather. Some women have been leaving scarves for the homeless in Lexington's Phoenix Park. The scarves are free for anyone in need. And doctors at UK, the hospital there, say programs like this can save lives because it is important to cover as much of your body as possible when you're outside. With a chance of snow now in the forecast, remember you can track the winter weather and traffic with the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app. You can download it for free for your smartphone or tablet. A murder trial against a Scott County woman is scheduled to begin today. Melinda Turner is accused of stabbing her boyfriend to death in August of 2010. Police say she killed 26-year-old Maxwell Pomeroy Jr. in their Georgetown home. We could find out today if the city of Nicholasville will approve a needle exchange program. It's already cleared one hurdle in the city commission. WKYT's Mike Byers at our live desk to explain where the issue goes from here. A decision on putting the syringe exchange program into play could come as soon as tonight when the Jessamine County Fiscal Court meets. This after last week when the Nicholasville City Commission voted 4 to 1 in favor of a resolution for the creation of the program. It's also been approved by the Jessamine County Board of Health. The program would be open one afternoon a week and would aim to build trust with addicted individuals, also offering them addiction counseling. The Jessamine Journal says the program could grow to roughly 200 participants. The public health director hopes the city can receive funding through the heroin bill for the program. Now, Nicholasville would be the fourth in the state to adopt a syringe exchange. Programs already exist in Lexington, Louisville, and Pendleton County. At the live desk, Mike Byer, WKYT.
All right, Mike, thank you very much. And Lexington Mayor Jim Gray will deliver his annual State of the Merge Government Address today. He will be speaking at 11.30 this morning from the Lexington Center. Gray is expected to say the city is in good financial condition. He will likely also talk about crime and safety concerns in the city. Uh, there have been four murders in Lexington already this year. And, of course, Gray's address comes amid speculation that he may challenge U.S. Senator Rand Paul in the election this year. Governor Matt Bevan has appointed a veteran farm policy official to the job as executive director of the governor's Office of Agricultural Policy. Warren Beeler spent six years working for the Kentucky Department of Agriculture. Most recently, he was the director of agricultural policy there. The governor says the Kentucky Agricultural Development Fund is crucial for the state's agricultural sector and rural economic development. Beeler majored in animal science out at Western Kentucky. University. Richmond police need help honoring one of their own at our nation's capital. Officer Daniel Ellis was killed in the line of duty last year. In May, his name will be added to the National Law Enforcement Memorial in Washington, D.C. Richmond police officers want to send some officers there to the ceremony. So the Madison County Fraternal Order of Police and Richmond Police will host a pancake breakfast February 27th at First Baptist Church on the bypass. The money raised will be used for the trip. Our time this morning is 6.36 on WKYT, and after hiring two new coaches, the University of Kentucky football program may be losing one. It's a word. Chad Scott reportedly leaving UK for North Carolina. Footballscoop.com says the Wildcats wide receivers coach has accepted a position with the Tar Heels. Scott was a running back at UK for two seasons before transferring to UNC. Had he stayed at UK, Scott would have worked under his third offensive coordinator in four years. The oldest living Breeders' Cup champion, Gulch, has died at the age of 32. The 1988 Breeders' Cup Sprint champion and Eclipse Award winner was euthanized Sunday morning due to complications from cancer. Gulch had been at Old Friends Farm, a thoroughbred retirement center in Georgetown, since 2009. A uh, horse he was. Well, it does not open for another six months, but tickets for the Ark Encounter go on sale today. The biblically themed park in northern Kentucky was built by Answers in Genesis, the same group behind the Creation Museum. They expect two million visitors a year. The park features a massive ark that is more than 500 feet long and 85 feet wide. Tickets are $40 for adults and $28 for children, $31 for seniors, and there's a parking fee of $10, by the way. Well, a Central Kentucky pastor will have the chance to meet with the Pope. Father Jim Sitchko, the pastor at St. Mark Catholic Church in Richmond, is one of Pope Francis's missionaries of mercy this year. Next month, he will be traveling out to Rome with other missionaries. They will each have a personal meeting with the Pope and be formally commissioned as missionaries of mercy. Well, restaurant chain Max and Irma's is closing 13 stores, but it looks like all remaining Kentucky locations will be spared. The company is trying to streamline operations and deals with underperforming outlets. The owner, Nashville based American Blue Ribbon Holdings, says senior managers went to the restaurants in Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana yesterday to deliver the news. The chain's website lists 51 locations in 10 states. Now 6.38 on WKYT this morning. Let's get a check of traffic right now, see what's happening out there besides the cold. <laughs> we do know that much. Let's check in with Officer Don and live drive traffic. Don? Hey, good morning. A couple of stalled cars. Cold is definitely going to cause that. There's one on the outer loop of Man Award Parker's Mill. It's blocking the right lane. And then another inbound Richmond Road. This one is just past the Shea. Uh, and the inbound right lane blocked there as well. Live look at Lexington Rush Hour traffic. You can see our construction zone there. But mostly everything's in the green this early with no significant issues. Drive time's looking good as of right now. If you plan to head out the door anytime soon, looks like we're dealing with about 10 minutes from Versailles, 18 to Paris, Winchester to, uh, from Lexia, from, from, Win from Ugh. Winchester election is 31, and Richmond will take about 31 minutes. Now back to you in the studio. <laughs> All right, it is early, Don. Thank I think you. it's that cold, tongue tie. You know, that's what <laughs> it you can get. happen certainly. And uh, you can uh, join Officer Don and Deanna over on 98 won the Bull. And when you get in your car this morning, they'll keep you informed. All right, 6:39 now. It's a rare sight in the sky. We'll tell you what to be looking for this week. Uh, I'll tell you what to be looking for. Snow, because we're going to have plenty of it falling from the sky starting tomorrow and into Thursday, Friday, Saturday, early next week. All kinds of stuff coming at us. We'll track it coming up.
It's all about the bitter cold air on this edition of our first alert severe weather day or days. It likely ends up being a whole week long event here as we're going to be tracking a lot of weather coming at us over the next few days. Right now, though, it's about the cold and it's 10 degrees in Lexington. When you factor in the winds, it puts us to sub zero territory, around two below zero in Lexington when winds are thrown into the mix. Everywhere else, though, you're looking at 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 degrees, very common throughout most of the area. Area. So we're tracking the cold this morning. A little bit of snow still showing up across uh, eastern parts of Kentucky. Maybe enough to get uh, some on some of the cars, some on the roadways. Cold, solid surfaces and a little into the grass as well. So we'll just certainly watch out for that. You could run into some slick spots. Winter weather advisory. This isn't tied to that snow. It's tied to a more significant threat that we have going into tomorrow. Starting at 4 o'clock in the morning, that's when the advisory begins. We might run into those bands of snow a little bit earlier than that, though. So from 4 until 7 o'clock, winter weather advisory for our area. And here's the reason why. One to three inches of snow, a safe bet across central and parts of southeastern Kentucky as well. Then there's a little swath that even gets as far uh, east as parts of Pulaski and Wayne counties. Uh, where you could run into some totals higher than that, three to six. Now keep in mind, we could lock in on maybe that uh, five inch, four inch, or the three inch in that area as well. But it's just something to, to keep in mind. One to two across northern and far eastern parts of Kentucky with this particular round. Here's the way that round evolves and comes at us here in the coming days. By the way, we're around 20 degrees today, much warmer than we were yesterday with some of those mid teens. Watch what happens though once we get into the morning, 7 o'clock. The snow is really ramping up at this point on Wednesday morning, at least with this model run, showing that uh, morning commute might be a miserable one. And that continues through mid morning. Heavy bands showing up in the blue and showing up in the spots that we've highlighted for higher totals, too, by the way. And snow finally wrapping up, at least this round, by Wednesday night, right around expiration time. And then we focus in on a more significant threat toward the end of the week. Some of the data that I was watching that came in overnight suggests this might have winds gusting 30 miles per hour or higher. That is some pretty intense stuff. There's no other way to word it. Just intense stuff. But it rolls in here. It's all about the track of that and brings us another snow chance going into Friday and also wrapping around into Saturday. And it, again, it has accumulation written all over it. Now, how much and how strong those winds are going to be? I mean, this is all yet to be determined, something we're going to have to nail down, especially after the door opens and we can see it a little bit better once one system exits because there's a lot going on in the atmosphere, and that will influence perhaps the path that it mm -hmm. takes when it gets here. So it's something we'll have to watch. Well, it's interesting that uh, tomorrow's system uh, will probably clear on out for Thursday, we'll maybe even a peak of sunshine. E say, even uh, a peak of sunshine it? before it late that night. It's Starts to roll back in, crank up. All the action occurs. <laughs> and all oh, of it, man. Yeah. and plenty of it. Yeah. Ready for that? People making their bread runs, right? <laughs> yeah. Better. Uh, Six forty-five on WKYT this morning. Well, starting tomorrow, sky watchers will get a special treat. They'll be able to see five planets at the same time. Right, Mercury, Venus, Saturn, Mars, and Jupiter. Well, all uh, <laughs> and snow. <laughs> oh, there, Jim says, uh, will be visible for about forty-five minutes just before sunrise. Experts say it is the first time in more than ten years. That all five of them have appeared together in the pre dawn sky. The show will last through February 20th, and if you need help in knowing where to look, you can check out the U.S. Naval Observatory's webpage. They have an app that can help you with that. Huh. So that'll be very interesting to see, but it does sound like with that uh, snow rolling in around here tomorrow, we might have uh, some visibility issues. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of things to see, right? All right. More news, stay with us. Coming up, protests in Flint over lead contamination in the city's water. We report from Michigan where the governor has refused calls to step down. Plus, Ted Cruz takes his case against Donald Trump directly to the voters. More real news coming up on CBS This Morning. Now. <laughs> Welcome back in. It's good to have you with us on WKYT, now 649, and they're getting ready to go, as you see there at uh, CBS This Morning in New York. And coming up on the program this morning. Yeah, federal officials on the lookout for a virus that causes birth defects. They continue to warn pregnant mothers not to travel to some countries. That story and more ahead on CBS This Morning, starting in just a few minutes at 7. Well, there are more than 30 school cancellations and delays on WKYT.com this morning. We're dealing with a wind chill that is below zero in many parts of the Commonwealth, uh, but that was not enough to cancel classes in some counties. School is on and on a normal schedule today in Fayette, Madison, and Scott counties. It's a two-hour delay, though, in Clark, Jessamine, and Bourbon counties. 
In Laurel County, the coroner says a 95-year-old woman died from the cold weather. Police say Dorothy McKnight walked away from the Laurel Village Assisted Living Community in London. She was later found dead outside a nearby home. Last week in Lexington, a homeless man was found frozen to death behind Wildcat Warehouse on South Broadway. With a chance of snow in the forecast, remember to track the winter weather and traffic on the WKYT Weather Plus traffic app. You can download it for free to your smartphone or tablet. A fire has engulfed the top floor of the Ritz Hotel in Paris this morning. The fire broke out in the five-star hotel a few hours ago. According to initial reports from firefighters, the entire top floor has been destroyed. There are no reports of injuries so far. The top floor was undergoing some renovations and was set to reopen in March. This is a story that's gotten a lot of attention. The Michigan governor there, Rick Snyder, is delivering a state of the state speech today. This is over growing anger over states, the state's response to Flint's contaminated water crisis. A lot of emotion, a lot of concern there. And Don Champion has the latest on protests and calls for the governor there to resign. The Flint water crisis will dominate Michigan Governor Rick Snyder's State of the State address today. Monday, while the Republican governor called the city's contaminated water a disaster, dozens demonstrated outside his home calling for his resignation. Many called his slow response to Flint's water supply contaminated with lead criminal. He should have switched it back over to Detroit water as soon as he knew of the contamination. National Guard troops are now handing out bottled water to residents. 605 is all set. State troopers are also giving out lead tests and filters. What happens after the water and filter is gone? We're still going to have the lead. We're still going to have the pipes. We're still going to have the poison. Governor Schneider says he plans to request once again that President Obama declare Flint a federal disaster area instead of just a state of emergency. State of emergency only gives us a $5 million cap. If they would have submitted for a disaster declaration, we could have got the $96 million or more. The president already denied the request once before, citing the situation in Flint was man-made. Don Champion, CBS News. And Flint has gone back now to its original water source. Today, the city's mayor is traveling to Washington in hopes of securing a disaster declaration. Meanwhile, attorneys representing Flint residents are planning to announce two new class action lawsuits today targeting Governor Snyder. Calls to boycott the Oscars next month are gaining momentum. Actress Jada Pinkett Smith and director Spike Lee among those who won't attend, they say. For the second year in a row, the Academy did not nominate a single performance by a black actor. Academy President Cheryl Boone Isaacs issued a statement saying she's heartbroken and frustrated over a lack of diversity. A bipartisan Senate agreement would give more flexibility to schools in what healthy meals they serve. Some schools have complained that the current rules are burdensome and the changes would ease requirements on whole grains and delay an upcoming deadline to cut sodium levels. The Senate Agriculture Committee is set to vote on the changes tomorrow. A Wisconsin woman faces her third drunk driving offense, but this time it's for driving a stolen patrol car while drunk. Police say a deputy and a state trooper were dealing with an intoxicated man and woman at a BP gas station. Sarah Wyndham left the convenience store, and when the deputy looked outside, his patrol car was gone. Hmm. Probably not a good idea. The deputy and trooper jumped in the trooper's car, caught up with the stolen squad car, and arrested the 29-year-old woman. Mm, Sarah, more yeah. trouble. All right, uh, 6.54 right now. Our 24-hour newsroom keeping you right up to the minute on WKYT.com. We do have those uh, dozens of delays and closings this morning. Lots of school systems starting a little earlier, uh, starting a little later, that is, this morning because of the intense cold out there. Uh, we do have the current weather advisories up top as we anticipate snow tomorrow. As we've been reporting, the cold appears to have claimed a victim in Laurel County. A 95-year-old woman died of exposure. Dorothy McKnight had walked away from an assisted living facility, so certainly a tragedy there. One of the great voices of the Eagles has died. Glenn Fry was also the co-writer of such huge hits as Hotel California and Life in the Fast Lane. Glenn Fry was still sounding great not long ago at all when the Eagles played Lexington last July. He's died at the age of 66. 
27. Also trending this morning, a little Kentucky dog doing okay after being put in a large outdoor trash compactor in Louisville. A lot of you checking out that story this morning. The dog discovered only after the compactor jammed when a worker tried to fire it up. A longtime attendee says dealing with the cold was a small price to pay to be part of the Martin Luther King Jr. events in Lexington yesterday. Kentucky.com has extensive coverage. Also, a Lexington woman's story goes viral. Molly Galbraith is urging women to appreciate their bodies as they are. She posted, this is a body that loves protein and vegetables and queso and ice cream. So lots of folks uh, relating to that story around the country this morning. And CBS This Morning is coming up shortly with your eye opener, and we'll have local updates. Join us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or Instagram. There they are at CBS. And for the latest, WKYT.com. And, Bill, no major issues out there traffic-wise this morning. A little bit of a slow go, looks like, uh, there on Richmond Road and an accident out in parts of uh, Clark County, as a matter of fact, as well. But uh, no issues here in Lexington. Other than it's cold, it's 10 degrees right now. You don't want to break down in this type of weather. Temperatures, when you factor in the winds, come in sub-zero for many of us. So 8, 9, 10 showing up throughout most of the area. Winter weather advisory. This is for tomorrow, but we have to prepare you for it because it's a good chance to see some accumulating snow throughout the entire area. We're talking from that system. One to three inches through Lexington, stretches down to Hazard, London. I mean, a big chunk of the area. This is one of two that will likely pay us a visit this week. The one that comes toward the end of the week will just add on to the totals and has a lot of potential associated with it as well, guys. Oh, hmm. get ready. <laughs> and, yeah. Winter has now Are arrived. we ready? I don't know. Like, and right. it's going to kick us in the face. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> All right. Nobody is more up to date than you to start your day. Thank you so much for being with us on WKYT. A reminder, the news is always on at WKYT.com. CBS This Morning's X. Have an awesome day.